So the Unity Timeline feature is awesome. Um, depends how you get to this. I found out about it earlier, but this Unite 2016 talk really brings it home. So what we're going to do is set up everything so you can start experimenting with this stuff from scratch. Let's just recap real quick about what we're talking about. This is the Unite 2016 video. Uh, and we're going to see some pretty nice camera work done using Timeline right here. This video, it's in the Space City world. And we wanted to just show a little bit more about doing now he's really quick the camera. camera layout on a scene. we got this girl and she goes down. All right, check this out. While it's playing, watch the timeline in the bottom right-hand corner here. And as it proceeds... She shoots and just blended between two shots. There's one shot up in the sky, and then there's one shot that's this shot. Just set the composition up and you can and see... And then it cut to another camera. Two shots blend. And then... And then it cut to another uh, camera. Now, if you've tried to do this in Unity without timeline, you know it can be a, a difficult task. And if you have a background of video editing, maybe After Effects compositing, you know that being able to do this in that kind of visual way is really nice. So I'm sold, and uh, I spent time today figuring out how to get started. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into it. Now, we've got a shopping list. We're going to need a bunch of stuff to get this rolling. And this is the list here. So the first thing on the list is we need Unity 5.6.0 B6, but we need a particular build of it. So instead of going to the normal page for downloading, you want to go to this page. I'll put this link in the, in the notes. And uh, I'm using a Mac, but it also works on Windows. I've tried both. So go ahead and download whichever one corresponds to your computer. Um, this is going to put the installer on your computer. And then you're going to run through that just like you normally would for installing Unity. I'm going to pause it for a moment, let you catch up with all that, and then meet me back at the point where you've got Unity installed and fired up. So, pausing. Okay, welcome back. We are now at Unity 5.6.0 B6 that we've downloaded from this page. We didn't do the other version of it because that's not going to have timeline. It's going to be this version. Cool. So, from here, let's start a new project. I'm going to call it New Timeline. Create that. And give it a second to set up. Timeline is baked right into this version of it. So the first thing you want to do is just check to make sure you've got it. Go up to Assets, Create, and look for Timeline. You see Timeline? Great. You're in good shape. So that's step one. Timeline's installed. Let's go back to the checklist of things to download. So step two is you need the Cinemachine package. Now the easiest place to grab that would probably be from the Assets store. So I'm going to do that here by going to the Asset Store tab, searching for Cinemachine, and totally spelling it incorrectly. <laughs> uh, it's been a long day, guys. It really has. Let's try that. That was more like Cinnamon Toast Crunch or something. There it is. OK, you're looking for Cinem Cinemachine base rig. Uh, Cinema Machine, pretty great stuff. This is going to get those nice camera pans and things for you. Go ahead and Google search Cinema Machine and read its praises. Basically, the, the guy who created this joined Unity recently. And, uh, you know, the, the description talks about it right here. It's awesome. But go ahead and import that into your project. Um, just import the entire thing as it is. So... Actually, I'm going to do it as well with you guys because it's a fresh project, so import. We'll give that a moment. Okay, so you'll see it appears here. Now, there is documentation. Plenty of documentation. Uh, I highly recommend reading that, but we won't do that now. So that's number two, we had to download that. Sec uh, third thing we need to download is, while we're in the asset store, let's get the post-processing stack. This is really nice for adding ambient occlusions and anti-aliasing, all sorts of good stuff to make your final product look really nice. So we'll import that as well. There we go. This isn't strictly necessary to do the camera work, but Using all these things in conjunction is going to create very nice stuff. So we'll just install it all for now.
Almost finished. Okay, great. So that's finished. I'm going to hit clear in the console just to make sure we're not getting any errors yet. And then I'm going to press play in the player to make sure everything is stable-ish. Looks good. Back to the list. So after installing that, the last thing we need is the Cinemachine package. Now this is going to make it so Cinemachine can work with Timeline. There is a readme with this too, which explains some exceptions um, right here. You might want to have a look at that. But the gist of it is this. We're going to download this, install it, and to go from there. So that's the package. It's on Google Drive. I'm going to click that button for download. Package drops right down. Clicking it to install it. Now you can see it's going to overwrite potentially some things. I'm just going to click import. And we're going to get some errors here, but that's all right. We'll straighten that out in just a moment. Okay, so down here, we've got some asset Cinemachine examples. So the example scenes, there's some problems. Um, I'm not getting into solving these problems right now, but what you can do, uh, they are good examples. You can open Cinemachine in its own project and check out the demos. But for this purposes, we're going to go right in and delete the demo folder out of Cinemachine to get, or excuse me, the example folder to get rid of these problems. There's the example folder, delete, and it's gone. So are the errors. So that's a win. Now we have, checking our checklist, we've installed the Unity, we've installed Cinemachine, we've installed the post-processing stack, and we've installed the Cinemachine package for Timeline. Now we can start working on some stuff. Okay. So one other resource, let's notice, uh, excuse me, make a reference to real quick is the instructions for all this stuff. <laughs> Here's the timeline manual. It's a document in flux. It's still beta, but this is very helpful for learning the concept of timeline. Um, I'm going to link this in the notes as well. We won't dwell on this for too long. The one other thing I want to show you too is, uh, let's see here. There's a few demos. There's this particle demo. You might want to take a look at that. I won't get into it. And there's a few other clips here and demos of people using it in production, or, well, using it in a demo live that's helpful for reference. But for what we're doing, let's cut right to the chase. We're going to make a simple uh, camera um, cinema machine example. So we've got this cube right here, and I'm going to create a floor just so we can have the basic environment to play around with. And we'll take the cube and make the cube a lot larger just so we can see our target easily, like so. And then we've got our camera perspective here. And the camera can see it. So, okay, the first thing we need to do is create an object to put the, uh, the timeline on, essentially. So we're going to call this one my timeline. Once you've created that, go to the timeline window so that if you don't see it is under windows and then look for um, timeline editor and you'll see this box appear here. If you click on the object we just created, it'll say down here to begin a new timeline, basically click create. So we do that and you have to give it a name. So this is creating what they call a playable object. I'm going to save mine in the assets folder. Now let's notice that on the my timeline object, it just created a play a playable director object. So this is important because that's going to essentially manage all this stuff. Now to get the camera shots going, we need to use Cinemachine for this. And the way that's done is by going up to uh, assets, create, and then down at the bottom, Cinemachine. Um, sorry, actually that's not what we want. Um, we want to go to the timeline and click add. Then at the bottom of timeline, uh, if the package for Cinemachine was installed correctly, you'll see this option that says Cinemachine.timeline. And then click Cinemachine track. So that's going to add a Cinemachine track to the timeline. And I apologize, the terminology is all pretty new to me. I'm just trying to explain it the best I can. Um, so once you have the Cinemachine track on the timeline, you have to drag in the main camera. Uh, excuse me, you have to drag in, well, you'll see. Once you drag the main camera, it's going to say, create Cinemachine brain on camera. You want to do that. 
So now the camera is going to be controlled by the Cinemachine framework. What all this got us right now is not too much yet. We need to add another camera to make this interesting. So from the main camera, you can see Cinemachine has been added here. We're going to click back on the My Timeline object. We're going to right click on the main camera track and then go to Add Cinemachine Shot Clip. We're going to add one of those. And then we're going to do the exact same thing again, right click, add send machine shot clipped, add a second. What we're going to do is cut between the first and the second shot to get our cinematic effect, camera A, camera B. So, from here, uh, left click the first one, look at the inspector panel on the right hand side, and scroll down to the bottom where it says cinema scene, sh cinema, sh <laughs> cinema scene shot. Fuck. Um, and then if you make the inspector large enough, you'll see a create button right next to this virtual camera. So I'm going to hit create, and that spawned a new object in the hierarchy called virtual camera. Now this is going to be the place where your camera essentially starts at. Right now the main camera is kind of off to the side. We're going to deal with this virtual camera one, and I'm going to position it down here, kind of near our original camera. The second thing I'm going to do is configure this to have a look at target. So the shot I'm looking for is I want to go um, and have both cameras focused on that cube. So under the virtual camera, under the Cinemachine virtual camera script, there's a, a look at attribute. So that's when we'll take our cube object and drag it into look at. Now that's all we got to do for now. There's more things we'll tweak in a minute. Now we've got camera one. So let's have a look at our timeline again. If we click on the first cinema, cinema machine shot, <laughs> we can see that under cinema machine shot, it has a virtual camera specified as virtual camera one. All that's good. So we move on to our second camera. And the second camera is the same thing. Uh, when we click on the clip, we look at the inspector, we go down to cinema, cinema machine shot. I'm gonna start calling it CS from now on, or CM, CM. So we go to CM shot. I'm going to click create again to create a second virtual camera. And on that virtual camera, I'm going to specify the look at object to be the cube. There we go. And I'm going to move the transform of the object a bit to the right. So ultimately, we're looking for kind of a, a transition between these two cameras. Uh, so once that's in place, we'll go back to the timeline. And uh, from here, we're going to give it a test. So. Um, Basically, just hit play at this point. It's all set to autoplay. So that's shot one. And then when we get to shot two, it should flip to another camera perspective, like so. So that's how we've got these A, B shots. Now, what just blows my mind is that you can then smoothly transition these shots by taking, for example, the second one and left click dragging it and overlapping the other shot like that. Watch this. Playing. Static. Static, smooth transition to the next camera. Holy shit, that is awesome. I mean, I am so pleased with these new features. Okay, so not to gush fanboy style too hard on all this stuff. The gist of it is that when you line up your two shots, you then specify a couple virtual cameras for those shots, and then you can go back and forth between the two cameras. One other thing I just want to note really quick, because I don't want this to go too long. I'll make a few more if people want to see more of this. Uh, is that with Cinemachine you can really choreograph your shots like amazingly nice. So to do that we'll take virtual camera 2 and we'll scroll down a little bit and when it says uh, under where it says lens attributes you're looking for the aim attribute. It's set to hard constant. Flip that to compose uh, excuse me composer and then we'll go to the game perspective you'll see this grid up here. This is where you can line your shot up to get the kind of framing you want. So for example, in this shot, let's say I want the tracked object offset to come up a little higher. I can scroll these values here. Or down here, you can do a lot of different things. Like this is the most dramatic. You can scroll Dutch, it flips the camera perspective. Um, so let's go to virtual camera one for a moment here. Hard, yeah, composer. And then if I scroll this, for example, you can see that dot. So what Cinemachine is gonna do is try to maintain your framing like that. So I'm gonna try to maintain the framing on camera one to be looking at that 
right at the edge of that cube. So what's cool now is that when we play this, you'll see the first camera is going to try to maintain that perspective, even while it's transitioning and moving. So let's go to scene. Let's go to play and give it a try. Camera static, pans transitions, maintains perspective, and now on the second shot I can specify either the same location for my uh, composition or I could do something a little different. And all that can be specified right here. Now I'm not 100% sure, for example, how you tweak Virtual Camera 2 and get feedback on it in real time in the window. I know right now the camera's locked to Virtual Camera 1 and that's why we can see these kind of changes. So I guess you could just experiment with it a little bit and figure that out. So that's the gist of it. I don't want to make the video too long, but that's how you get started with uh, installing this stack. Maybe just one more thing I'll mention is that all this Cinemachine stuff um, basically gets its cues from the main camera. So we installed earlier the uh, really cool post-processing stack. So let's do a quick example of how that applies to the project. So if I right click in my projects folder, go to create, and then looking for post-process, post-processing profile. Whew, these names. <laughs> and we're just gonna call this experiment. Now this has a bunch of cool stuff, your anti-aliasing, ambient occlusions, fog, depth of field, all the good stuff rolled into one package. So take this and then apply that to the camera. Oops, sorry. Uh, on the camera object, you have to add a component to it. Post-processing behavior. Add that component, and then under profile, take this uh, post-processing behavior, drag it and drop it into, oops, drag it and drop it into the box. So now what's going on is that this whole entire stack of processing that we have here is going to get applied to both of those virtual cameras because both of those virtual cameras are taking their cue from the main camera. Really cool consideration. So just as a quick example, let's do something that is fairly like obvious looking. So let's do, hmm, do vignette. Do a classic vignette. Let's crank the intensity of that a bit. So we got this kind of thing going on here, you know. So we'll crank that up. And let's look at our timeline, and we'll do one more test. We're going to go between two shots. We're going to transition smoothly between those shots while keeping the composition. And we're going to throw a vignette on top just because, you know, we can. There it goes. It's beautiful, man. What a way to compose things. So um, hopefully this video is helpful to you. It took me a while to dig up all this stuff. I basically spent most of today and last night kind of lining it all up, uh, and I couldn't find a video for it, so here you go. Um, one more thing I'll mention too is that I think the next video I'm going to do for this will involve more general stuff like uh, just moving objects around, putting some audio in sequence, and I think I'm going to take the MCS characters and animate those next as well, so stuff to look forward to. This video is already 18 minutes. I'm going to get out of here. Thanks. Uh, thanks for watching. See you next time.